everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm creating a, yet another new spreadsheet. Uh, that's what I like to do. <laughs> Spreadsheets have infinite possibilities, infinite possibilities. There's so many things that you can do with them. It's like a blank piece of paper. And um, I wanted to explore as much as possible the just concepts that have to do with the millennium, and what life is going to be like during the millennium. Now, <clears throat> I'm not saying that what I have here on this spreadsheet is absolutely correct. Uh, in a lot, in some cases, this could be oversimplified. Um, so this is just kind of like <clears throat> thinking about what things could be like based on just my best guess. And I'd like to hear your input, what you think about this, if you have anything to add. So, uh, this is probably going to have to be <clears throat> part of a series because there's going to be so many things that change. <laughs> so many things that change. So, this video is going to be primarily focused on crime, law, law enforcement. Okay. So, in the millennium, what we do know is that anyone that's living a telestial law Will not be moving forward. Now, we don't have any kind of statistics of, you know, between celestial, terrestrial, and uh, telestial law abiding people in this life, immortality, how, how it breaks down, like, uh, as far as like who commits the most crime. I think it's pretty safe to say that most likely the telestial uh, people do. Uh, what we don't know is it, is it like, 90% uh, of crimes are committed by telestials. Uh, is it only 50%? Um, we don't know. So that's why this is probably an oversimplification. But I think that this is going to be something that changes drastically as we move into the millennium. So let's go with the assumption that the majority of crime is caused by uh, telestials in that uh, certainly probably the most serious crimes are committed primarily by telestials, just by definition of what a telestial person is. So <clears throat> law enforcement. So basically, okay, I have this all color-coded blue. Uh, later, I'm going to look at other things like uh, what's nature going to be like. I'll have a different color for that. Um, you know, and, and other things that come up, technology, things like that. So, okay, crime. And uh, starting with law enforcement. So, do you think there's going to be any more police? Now, certainly, uh, I think there's no doubt there will be judges. Remember that in the millennium, we're going to have both... Um, we're still going to have the ecclesiastical side of the church, but with the millennium, we're going to have the political side Christ is going to be the literal political king of the world. Uh, I assume that he's going to create all laws. And <clears throat> as far as... Now, and I'm talking mostly about the beginning of the millennium, because at the beginning of the millennium, we're still going to have people from other faiths. Not everyone is going to immediately convert to the church or even accept Christ. There's still going to be Muslims. There's still going to be Buddhists. We've read about this from. There have been multiple quotes from different prophets that have stated this. So at the beginning of the millennium, <clears throat> this is how it's going to be. And that, I guess this is kind of the period that we're actually looking at. Uh, as the as the millennium progresses, everyone will either die off or they'll be converted uh, to the church. But in the beginning, uh, there's going to be some kind of political structure. <clears throat> that, um, you know, everyone will have to abide by. In that sense, every, na every knee will bow, or every knee will bow and every tongue confess uh, who Christ is, and they won't be able to um, go against him in the, in the political sense. They'll still be entitled to their beliefs, but they will have to abide by his laws. And so, with the Telestials gone... Um, I'm assuming that <clears throat> there's going to be laws, and therefore laws can be broken because uh, we're still going to have agency. But 
And so therefore, there's probably going to be some kind of judicial system uh, outside the church because it's going to be governing the whole world and everyone else, uh, everyone. But, you know, are there going to be any more police in the way that we think of police now? Okay. Uh, is policing going to be very different than what we're used to right now? So, for example, would police or whoever conducts uh, law enforcement, are they, are they going to be carrying around weapons? Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it because I think that those that are left over, it, they're not going to commit crimes that are going to require or, or uh, law enforcement are not going to have to worry for their safety or for the safety of others and therefore need weapons for protection. I don't think so. I, I, don't, I personally don't think, uh, just like how we know that there's not going to be any more military, right? Isaiah talks about uh, turning um, swords into pruny hooks, right? There's not going to be any more war. And as far as law enforcement goes, is there going to be any more need for weapons? Because it may be as simple as you have a police officer, no weapons, Maybe not even handcuffs. Maybe not even handcuffs because um, it's very possible that, because we know that someone that's living a terrestrial law, they're a good upright person. They live decent lives. And that doesn't mean that they can't break the law. But it, it may be the type of thing where you have a police officer, they don't need to tackle you to the ground. They don't need to, <laughs> they don't need to tase you. Uh, use pepper spray or anything like that. They simply find you and then they're like, hey, look, you did this. Here's a ticket. Show up in court. You know, I, I think that's very possible that that might be what policing looks like in the millennium. Uh, and, and, and if that's the case, then you have to wonder what kind of law enforcement agencies will there be? You know, are we still going to have security guards in, um, you know, retail locations or other places? There, be, there may not be any more need for security guards because for all we know, maybe theft won't be a thing anymore. Uh, are we going to have bodyguards, people that have to worry for their protection uh, because of, you know, their celebrity status or... Uh, they're a public figure. Yeah, is there going to be any more need for bodyguards? I don't know. Uh, you might argue, well, is there going to be mental illness during the millennium? And I, I tend not to think so because you could say, well, someone that's not in the right mind, uh, they may obsess over a celebrity and go and uh, try and attack them or something like that. But I, I have to. I have to think that I, I don't think that mental illness will be around in the millennium. Um, the reason why is because we know that everyone's going to have to be translated. <clears throat> and uh, we don't know exactly what that entails, like specifically. But I, I would assume that since, you know, we're going to be living to the age of a tree or living to the age of a hundred before you die, there's not going to be... Um, ailments or disease or anything that kill you ahead of your time uh i feel like the implication of that is that things like mental illness may not be around anymore so bodyguards are they going to be needed i i don't know and i don't i kind of don't think so uh fugitive recovery agents otherwise known as bounty hunters you know we're not going to have any more uh boba fett's <laughs> i don't think <laughs> Boba Fett is the famous bounty hunter from Star Wars. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think so because you have to wonder: Is there even going to be jail? Is there even going to be jail? Could it be that the nature of law enforcement uh, and punishment, it's not so much jail or prison or anything like that, but rather fines or maybe community service or things like that, restitution. Um, so if, if there is no jail or prison, uh, you would not, I don't, I don't believe you'd have any need for fugitive recovery agents. 
because you wouldn't have anybody that's that's paying. Um, they're not getting bailed out of jail, and then uh, bail jumping. So, because there is no jail. Um, okay, so <clears throat> again, local police. Yeah, is there? Gonna, I, I assume that there's going to be some kind of local police, but just very different than what we see now. I I, I kind of doubt that there would be like patrol cars, um, you know, looking for for people that are causing trouble. Uh, it may be more, again, maybe you just have someone in town, they're the police person, but, uh, you know, th they just go to wherever a crime has been reported, the person isn't running away because they're living in terrestrial law and the crime isn't that serious anyway because it's now the millennium, and maybe it's just like, hey, you, you shouldn't have done that, and sorry, but you, you're going to have to pay this fine or you're going to have to go to court, you might be serving some community service um sheriff's office same thing you know the sheriffs they're over the county uh game wardens right uh now game wardens is interesting because we've talked about on the channel uh, are, are we still going to be eating meat and uh i think there's a good chance of that but again when we read in isaiah it, it makes it seem as though uh, animals, for example, animals that were once predatory uh, and, th and that did eat meat will no longer eat meat. Uh, it's, like, it's like their bodies will change uh, and it says that they'll eat straw, right? So does that mean, you know, because we're, Earth is going to be basically leveling up and we're going to be living leveling up to a terrestrial condition not a terrestrial glory because we haven't reached the glory stage no one no one has yet but it'll be a terrestrial condition and i just wonder uh if maybe that'll be done away with so uh the reason why i point that out is because for one if we're not eating meat or we we're eating less meat then there's probably gonna be a, lo a lot less hunting going on and possibly fishing uh i don't know but even if there still is you know, everyone being more upright, uh, either living a celestial or a terrestrial law, you're not going to have these people that go out and um, poach um, and do and do what they shouldn't be doing, right? Hunting animals that they shouldn't be hunting, uh, or hunting too many animals uh, that they don't have a license for. So uh, there, there really may not be a need anymore for game wardens. Uh, border patrol. Uh, it it seems to me that um, you know, and you might have to correct me in the comments, but I think that there still will be nations, but not in the sense that like they're they're so sovereign as they are now. It's almost like the world being united through Christ. Christ will be the king of the world, but there's still nations, just like how. Uh, it, it, almost like he would be like the federal government and then nations would become like states. Uh, like when you're looking at the United States of America, you have states and the federal government. So um, I'm not so sure. Well, I, I, I don't think that there would be any sort of border, border patrol at all. Uh, for one, the earth will receive its paradisical glory. And when it comes to sustaining yourself, surviving, I think that the going... Uh, that everything's going to be a lot more easy to support yourself, your family. We're going to be living the law of consecration. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enforced on the entire world or if it's mostly going to be just on uh, the saints. Uh, and I, again, I'm talking about the beginning of the millennium. But anyway, the point is, uh, because there won't be any war, um, because things will probably settle down as far as like not having to flee for safety or come to a country like the United States so that you can survive, have a decent life, uh, there probably wouldn't be any sort of uh, border patrol or, or people that work at checkpoints on the border. You know, it may, it may be just open borders. You, you live in a country, but as far as entering another country, it may not be that big of a deal. Um, and then we have state police, the you know the state troopers, the highway patrol. Uh, you have to think about the nature of 
travel and um, if we still have cars, and I assume that we would, uh, I doubt that there would be very many people speeding anymore. You know, maybe maybe there would be, and that could be a problem because it's dangerous. Um, again, that brings me back to the question of being translated um, in you having the guarantee that you'll be able to live your full natural life. Are you still able to be killed if like you fell off a cliff or you get hit by a car? That's something that I don't know, really. Um, because you're still in your mortal, in a mortal state, the implication there is that you can still be killed. So, um, and because speeding uh, threatens life and it's dangerous, maybe there still would be some kind of state troopers uh, or someone, someone that basically ensures... Um, safety in, in travel, uh, staying within the speed limit. So, and then you have the various uh, bureaus of investigation that at the state level, and then you have the federal bureau of investigation. So these are, um, you know, at, at the top, it's not common police. They, they enforce a different set of laws, federal laws, state laws. Um, again, would there be any more FBI or um, anything like that? I don't know. Kind of don't think so. May, it, it, there may still be, but it may be a lot more along the lines of how police might change at the local level, where it's not you're, you know you're not armed and you're just you're just enforcing a different set of laws. Uh, marshals, you know, uh, in the I don't know if like other countries have anything similar to marshals, but U.S. Marshals, um, I, I kind of doubt that, that that would be a thing anymore. I put Coast Guard down. I, I realize that they're a branch of the military, but they do help with law enforcement, and it's similar to Border, border Patrol. So um, Coast Guard in the sense of law enforcement or helping law enforcement, there may not be that need anymore because there, there may not be people trying to uh, smuggle things anymore. So, uh, smuggling may go away. It, it probably would go away. I, I highly doubt that there would be smuggling of anything in the millennium. Therefore, uh, the assistance of the Coast Guard, and, and again, the Coast Guard itself being a military, a branch of the military, uh, probably would cease to be because there, well, it certainly would cease, be, cease to be because there would not be military anymore. So, yeah, no more, no more Coast Guard. Uh, Secret Service, right? Uh, the Secret Service, they're, they're basically, they, they're the bodyguards of uh, the president. And uh, for one, uh, I, I know for a fact that Christ is not going to need a Secret Service. <laughs> He's not going to need a Secret Service. Um, there's not going to be any. And then if you have like, but if you have like local... Uh, political leaders, uh, whatever they may be, governors or whatever, um, I don't think there's going to be any more need for any type of secret service. Okay, so all these different uh, law enforcement agencies and, and businesses and stuff, uh, I, I think it's going to be radically, radically different than what we know now. So this is just like a small little taste of how things are probably going to change in the millennium. It's going to be a different world, but that's not all. Okay, now let's look at different crimes. Theft, burglary, shoplifting. Uh, this is what, one that I've wondered for a long time. Uh, I don't know when I first had this, this uh, question, but it's been on my mind for uh, at least more than 10 years is that in the millennium, is there going to be any more need for locks? You know, locks on your door, uh, locks for, or, you know, safes, you know? Um, probably not. You're probably not going to need locks anymore. The only lock that you'd probably need is like for the bathroom. So someone doesn't accidentally open the door. Um, or, or maybe, 
you know, for conference rooms or offices so that like if you're having a private meeting with somebody, somebody doesn't accidentally open the door. But locks, in order to deter um, and prevent theft, burglary, stuff like that, I don't think so. And that would be a great day if we can just sleep at night and leave your doors unlocked and not have to worry about if is someone going to try and invade your home. Uh, also, uh, there's probably not going to be any more surveillance cameras as far as uh, surveillance to for crime. You know, there there would probably still be surveillance cameras for uh, other purposes. Uh, they're, they're good. Sur surveillance cameras are good because they can observe things like sometimes, for example, if there weren't surveillance cameras, uh, there's a lot of like earthquakes and stuff that wouldn't be captured on um, on video. Uh, of course, I, there probably won't be earthquakes. I, I don't think that there's going to be earthquakes during the millennium, but um, yeah, so I don't know if there would still be surveillance cameras. Yeah, pro probably not. Okay, and then um, no more security devices. So like when you go to an electronic store and it has the that device that uh, will set off the alarm if you walk out of the store without paying for it, uh, that's going to probably be a thing of the past because I doubt that there's going to be ver very much theft going on. You know, and, and another thing is... You know, you're out in public, you drop your wallet, you drop your phone, whatever. Um, you know, there's whenever that's happened to me, okay, and we've had that a few times, like, uh, well, I won't, I won't name names, but someone in our household uh, more than once has left his or her wallet <laughs> at, a, at a store and... And, uh, you know, when you realize that you've left your wallet somewhere, uh, your heart skips a beat, right? And uh, you panic a little bit, and you're like, oh my gosh, I hope that uh, store employees found it. I hope somebody returned it or gave it to the store employees. And thankfully for our case, yes, um, everything was fine. But in the millennium, I'm sure that's no big deal at all. You don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I left it in the cart. Uh, if the wrong person walked by and saw it, then they would just take it. They would maybe take whatever cash is in it, or who knows? Who knows? But I think that those kind of worries are going to be a thing of the past, in the millennium. Um, okay, fraud, identity theft. Uh, is there going to be any more need for passwords? or pins, personal identification numbers, security codes. Is there is there going to be any more need for that? I don't know why I have numbers right here. I'll just put security codes. Um, I don't think so. The reason why is because th those are meant to keep people out uh, of your account, uh, whether it's a bank account, a credit card account, um, a computer account where they can access sensitive information, private information, most likely not, uh, which would be so great. You know, you could just get on your computer. You don't have to memorize passwords or pins. You um, don't have to like resort to different methods of, um, how to come up with passwords or use services that keep track of passwords for you. That very well could be a thing of the past uh, once we get to the millennium. Um, and then you have, you know, scammers, con artists, you know, that uh, that's not going to be around. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be around because that that is definitely uh, telestial behavior. You know, if you're trying to scam somebody, you're trying to trick them and get their personal information. Um, no, that that is telestial behavior. Uh, abuse, abuse will most likely be a thing in the past. Um, 
And therefore, if abuse is no longer occurring, uh, abuse in any of its forms, then you have to wonder what kind of effect that'll have on the would-be um, abusees, right? Uh, no more having to go to like counseling, uh, no more PTSD, things like that, right? No, no more emotional scarring. And um, that, that'll be a thing of the past. Uh, kidnapping. You know, one thing that I'm always worried about whenever we're in public is uh, keeping an eye on my kids. And I, I hate that it has to be that way, but I never let them out of my sight. You know, uh, I have a 13 year old. I still, <laughs> I still don't let her out of my sight. I don't know when I'll feel comfortable with that. Maybe, I, I don't know. But, you know, I do that because I, I've seen so many stories, so many stories, and, and you have videos on YouTube that you can look up uh, where you're in a place that you think is safe, you know, somewhere like a Walmart or something like that. And right there, you, t you turn away from your cart and then something could happen really quickly, really quickly. So, <clears throat> you know, one thing that gets brought up a lot in like TV shows is how like in the 80s, 90s, uh, kids would always like ride around on their bikes and um, go to their friends' houses and stuff like that. Whereas I think that that's kind of come down a little bit. There's not so much of that because people have wised up to um, safety, you know, for your child. Uh, maybe it's not wise for your child by themselves to go across town on a bike, right? For, for concern of kidnapping. So, um, but in the millennium, uh, it's going to, not, not that, I'm, and I'm not saying that the 80s and 90s were safe or any other time. I think that it was just more people weren't as informed back then. Um, there was kind of a na naiveness or naiv naivety um, back in the 80s and 90s. And as more and more was reported, discovered, reported, then we all started to realize, no, we've got to be more careful with our kids. But I, I would love nothing more than for my kids to be able to just roam around town, like walk to their friend's house, uh, go to Main Street, go to the stores and not have to worry one bit, you know, be, be just completely... I, the only thing that I guess you'd have to be concerned about is like if they get lost, you know, but in the millennium, we're, we're still going to, I'm sure, still have the same technology and they can just have their phones or something like that. Or you just make sure that they know where they're going and how to get back home. And then that would be it. But no more fear. No more fear for your children. Um, you know, you go to a public place, for example, you go to a water park. Or something like that, and you can't you can't just like leave your kids. Uh, even though there's like other adults around and stuff like that, things can still happen. And I, I don't know. You might call me paranoid, but I, I just I've seen enough of it to where just like you just you got to make sure you yourself have to make sure that they're safe. That that's my philosophy. Um, I can't just trust necessarily other people, especially when they're strangers. Um, so anyway, that, that's a whole other thing. Okay, uh, <clears throat> another thing, uh, disturbing the peace. Disturbing the peace. So uh, there probably won't be such a thing anymore as noisy neighbors. Because, it, and, and here's what I mean. I think most of the time, maybe not all the time, but when you have noisy neighbors that are just blasting their music, they're having a party, um, it shows that they have a lack of care. They have a lack of uh, empathy, a lack of consideration for how you're experiencing their actions. And I feel like that's more of a celestial uh, frame of mind. So I doubt that there would be uh, people disturbing the peace, whether whether it's noisy neighbors or whether it's uh, public freakouts. Okay. <clears throat> 
And by the way, in this uh, third column, I have a question mark after all these things because I can't say for sure. I don't. I can't say for sure that there's not going to be any more public freakouts or noisy neighbors. These are all just guesses. But um, anyway, you go to YouTube, and I, I actually watch a lot of these channels that have public freakouts, and it's um, it is somewhat for entertainment. But I also like to just learn, learn about human behavior and uh, these people that are most of the time toxic people. It, it, the problem is not so much what's happening in the story, but that they're, they're just toxic people. And it's, it's really interesting to see the patterns and see just the common themes uh, that come up with these public freakouts. And it seems like most of them are very uh, telestially rooted you know, when you watch these channels, <clears throat> the <clears throat> sorry, the most frequent scenarios are uh, people freaking out at uh, fast food places, okay, Wh which is really stupid because it, it's so petty. It is so petty to freak out at a at a, a restaurant and especially especially fast food. You know, this is not five-star cuisine, and it's cheap, and it's not that serious. It really isn't. And the people that work there, you know, most of them, it's like their first job or, you know, whatever. Uh, humble circumstances, but you have these... Okay, so one of them is um, fast food restaurants. Another common one is property disputes. You know, like, oh, no, this is my... This is where the property line is. Blah, 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 blah. Um, another one is HOAs, or it doesn't not even necessarily HOAs, but just uh, neighborhoods, communities where you have somebody that wants to tell you what you're allowed to do with your property or um, wh whatever you're doing. Something uh, there, there's so many stories, but uh. <clears throat> the point is, the point is, all these kind of like, all, all this like improper behavior in public or whatever, these <clears throat> improper interactions, uh, I don't think that we're going to be seeing any more of those, really. Because I think that the majority of the time, it's um, it's these people that are living a telestial law and they, they don't care about others. They only care about themselves. They don't have empathy. They're not, they're not concerned about keeping the peace and keeping stability. They just want to, for whatever reason, uh, just cause trouble or they, they take things overboard. Uh, drugs. Drugs. Uh, I don't think drugs are going to be a thing at all. Uh, why? I, I think that that's something that would just be completely outlawed by the laws that that Christ uh, creates, right? So <clears throat> I think that we can be pretty certain that there won't be any more drugs, and I don't think that anyone living a terrestrial law would go so far as to secretly produce drugs, you know, like what happens now. I think that it will be completely a thing of the past. And therefore, no more drug-related deaths or injuries, no more ruined relationships because of drugs or addictions to drugs or support groups because of addictions to drugs, uh, no more smuggling like what we were talking about before or production. So... That by itself, uh, it would be amazing if we could see what the world right now would look like if there were no drugs and if there had never been drugs. How many people would still be alive? How many people would be maybe have just a higher quality of life because they didn't get caught into the world of drugs and what, and what drugs can do to you? Um, and then the next one is related. It's basically alcohol, but specifically driving under the influence and then public intoxic intoxication. And it's all basically the same stuff. I, I, I feel pretty sure that that would be completely outlawed, right? Um, so, you know, no more deaths from drunk driving. Uh, 
Now, we're talking about crime here, and right now alcohol is not a crime, but in the millennium, I feel like there's a good chance that it probably would be. And I, I think it's a really sad thing that uh, they got rid of prohibition, you know. Um, the reason why is because think about all the people that have been killed because of drunk driving. Uh, think about all the people that have been killed because of just drinking because somebody wasn't in control of themselves because they were drunk and they uh, were uh, in, a, in a rage and then they kill somebody. Um, that's another thing that you have to wonder, what would the world be like if alcohol just never existed? How many people would still be alive? How many families would still be together? Uh, things like that. And, and it just amazes me that it's still legal because... Um, you know, I don't want to get into the whole debate between like drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, but, um, it seems to me that alcohol is really bad and it's very, it's very dangerous. And I can't believe that it is legal because so much bad comes from it. So much bad comes from it. And I can't believe that we're all just like, oh, it's okay. Like we're against like some drugs and I'm not like supporting any drug, but like we're okay with we're okay with alcohol, but we're not okay with certain drugs. And again, I'm not making the case for drugs. It's just that alcohol is really dangerous. Um, okay, vandalism, you know. So no more. The biggest thing is like no more graffiti. Could you imagine what a what a, a graffiti free world would look like? Because it's all over the place. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you can't like hardly go anywhere, uh, any town, anywhere without seeing graffiti, right? Now, actually, I have to kind of think about it here in my town because I can't, honey, do you remember seeing any graffiti here? No. Well, I guarantee you that there probably is. There's obviously going to be less in small towns, but <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Sorry, let me clear my voice. Gosh. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. I We live in an area where there are so many trains and railroad tracks. So many. And of course, you, you know that trains are like one of the favorite places for graffiti people to go to. Graffiti artists. They love trains. And um, so we do see graffiti all the time on trains, you know, but then you go to like, uh, public restrooms and it's not graffiti, uh, like it's not spray paint, but you have the same type of thing with the either etching things and in, in the bathroom stalls or, uh, marker or whatever. Um, I'm going to put here public bathrooms, public bathrooms. Uh, just as a reminder. So, you know, there's not one public bathroom that you can go to anywhere. Um, you know, unless, unless it's like at your work, if you work in an office or or something like that, it's like a, a business and it's like for employees only or something like that. Um, but there's like, there's just nowhere, no public bathroom really that you can go to. You're, you're like always guaranteed that there will be some kind of something scratched into the wall or the bathroom stall, or there's going to be marker or pen. And it's usually in this like really stupid font that you can't even read. You like have to like sit there and be like, okay, that looks like an R and then that looks like a this. And then once you actually realize what the letters are, the word doesn't even make sense. Either it's some kind of like acronym for something, or it is a word but it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. And I don't know why, because like if I was into graffiti, um, I would, I, I, I don't know why it's so highly popular to use like the, the weird unreadable font that they, use, <laughs> that they use. And I know that like old English characters are really popular, but like, can you do something different? Just, just be, do something different. 
but you know, it's these people, whatever, <clears throat> that's not on their minds. So graffiti, writing on things, um, also just like ruining things in general, uh, breaking things, you know, think of all, think of all the different places that have to have, you know, either like protective glass or uh, protective whatever, maybe like a fence or something like that to prevent vandalism, <laughs> you know, um, it would be so great because everything would just feel so more free if, and I can't think of any examples, but I know that there's places where, you know, you have these measures put in place so that you can't uh, damage a statue or whatever. You, it would just feel like more free and it would feel like, oh gosh, okay, I feel like I can be trusted. Because even though you know that you would never commit vandalism, uh, you still kind of feel like, hey, I don't want to be clumped together with these people that that commit vandalism. I'm not, I'm not a vandal. Um, okay, stalking, right? And again, that goes along with like bodyguards. Uh, this kind of behavior, I believe, is one of two things. It's either purely telestial behavior. I don't think that any terrestrial does this. Um, and when I say stalking, like, you know, everyone kind of like looks at other people's um, Facebook and maybe kind of see, okay, what's this person up to? I'm talking about stalking in like the bad sense where you, it's like beyond just curiosity. Uh, and, and it may, the intent may be to harm or to uh, getting contact when contact is not wanted. Uh, so I feel like there's only two groups that really <clears throat> do that kind of stalking, uh, telestials and people that have mental illness. So if mental illness is gone in the, in the millennium, that's going to cut down on stalking. And then because telestials won't be around, that's going to cut down on stalking. I don't think that there will be any type of stalking. And therefore, no more having to be careful with your information. Um, you don't. You don't even have to necessarily be a celebrity. Uh, you can just be. <clears throat> you know, I know that there's like a lot of girls, pretty girls that have to deal with this kind of thing. Um, you know, there's like a guy that just uh, the girl is like a fantasy for him. It, he f wants that girl really bad. It just. And he can't do it because either he's a weirdo or something's going on with him. And so he resorts to this, like, really bad behavior of stalking. So I feel like that uh, will go away. Uh, obviously, rape. Uh, again, I feel like that that's a purely uh, telestial thing and possibly mental illness. So all, all the things that come from rape, whether it's unwanted uh, pregnancies or, um, you know, the psychological trauma afterwards, PTSD, emotional scarring, stuff like that, gone, done. Uh, same thing with, with assault and battery. <clears throat> you know, I can't say that I've ever really been worried about being assaulted, but, you know, Maybe there have been times in your life uh, that you can think of where it's like, you know, I might want to be just kind of careful around this person <laughs> because they're kind of a loose cannon or I don't know this person. It's a stranger who knows what they're going to do. You're not going to have those like background questions anymore. You know, you go to like some big city where, there, where there's like a lot of people and, uh, you know, you're carrying around your wallet. You, you don't have to worry about being mugged, you know in the millennium. You're not going to have to worry about that. Um, let's see. In fact, I should put that mugging or I should put to keep it consistent. I should do no more mugging. Um, so no, no more of these like worries. And, uh, like I've said before, it, it'd be interesting to see the effect that sin has on on your uh, your physiology right because when you have like different chemicals running throughout your body that are related to stress um or being in a state of alert 
uh, alertness. It, it's not good for you. It's it's toxic. Uh, stress is toxic. And even just like these probably like smaller levels of stress from like, uh, I'm kind of in an area I'm not familiar with. Um, is there, am I like in a safe place? Could I get mugged here or just like attacked? You know, even though it's small, you have to wonder what kind of effect those worries have on your body. So if you took it all together, like all these things and the stress that it could cause you and um, adrenaline and stuff like that, in the millennium, our bodies will probably be so much better off not having so much stress worry, fear, like literally uh, in a physiological way. So anyway, um, disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace. We kind of already talked about that with freakouts, but um, no more people most likely, you know, trying to be funny for a group of people and going overboard and um, doing stuff. No more people uh, just disturb, I don't know, disturbing the peace. Okay. Forgery counterfeit fitting. So is there going to be any need? Is there going to be any need anymore for things like watermarks or anti forgery techniques to safeguard documents or currency, right? Again, the, the secret service, uh, I don't know why I swear there, there's probably one time like on the History Channel, I, I saw why. But for some reason, the, the Secret Service, in addition to being the bodyguard, the bodyguards of the president, they're for some reason involved in, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, ca the counterfeiting of, of currency, of the U.S., of U.S. currency. Um, I know somebody. I know somebody back in high school that he uh, he printed money like he he had like a printer he printed um, what looked like hundred dollar bills I believe and then he went to Toys R Us back when Toys R Us was <laughs> uh, before it went bankrupt and tried to buy I, don't, I can't remember what the console was at the time so I don't know if it was an, a Nintendo sixty four or if it was like the first Xbox or something like that but. Uh, he got caught, and he got in trouble, and, um, you know, and there, there's all, all these, like, different techniques when it comes to currency to make sure that you can tell what's a real um, bill and what's not. You know, in the millennium, I don't think there's going to be that much effort needed anymore because people are generally going to be honest, and they're not going to be counterfeiting, um, you know, currency. So... <clears throat> And kind of along with this, uh, this doesn't go so much under forgery or counterfeiting, but, you know, uh, copyright things like having to worry about your intellectual property being stolen. Um, you have people that do uh, bootleg things or try and pass things off as their own as though they had um, taken that photo or whatever. So uh, copyright. In fact, I should... Let's see. No, I'll do. Um, I'll just do intellect. No, I'll do copyright infringement. Copyright infringement. Yeah. So no more, you know, FBI warnings at the beginning of movies or um, anything like that. Piracy, right? Um, indecent exposure. You, you don't have to worry anymore when you go to a baseball game, football game, whatever, of people streaking on the field or just, you know, do, doing whatever. People that just think that they're being funny, they're looking for attention, and they um, expose themselves in public. Uh, telemarketing fraud. You know, so no more robocalls. These robocalls that are trying to get your personal information that say that you're in trouble with the IRS and so you need to provide your whatever you need to make a payment uh, no more of that no more robocalls which would be a beautiful thing cyberbullying uh, cyberbullying we know that it can lead to suicide uh, in, ex in extreme cases um, 
And even though it's like over the computer, it definitely ha it definitely has an effect on whoever is being bullied. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm not looking for sympathy, and I, I'm whatever. Like when I started this YouTube channel, I felt like I understood toxic people really, you know, well enough, and I knew exactly how to handle trolls and stuff like that. And the way to handle it is just to ignore it, just move on. But it's amazing how, in my experience, and I've gotten much better with this, but in my experience, people can say like the most outrageous things, the most outrageous things um, that will get you to respond, that will like really get under your skin. And uh, now I haven't like responded to any of those in a long time. I feel like I've um had enough practice and experience now but when you when you are commenting on youtube uh to somebody they you know if they're like me they do see it i, I try and read all my comments and uh you're not just like having no effect you really can uh hurt that person and ruin their day um so you know and, and the thing about it is that Okay, so the way there's like a spectrum. When you're in person with somebody, you're less likely to release your toxic behavior, be a, a jerk, a rude person. It's less likely to happen in person. When you're on the phone, and at one time after high school, uh, and in, in, in my early marriage, I did work in um, in a call center uh, for Discover Card, and people are more daring with how they talk to you on the phone, right? But then on the internet where you're no longer actually in person and you're not even hearing each other's voice, uh, people I feel like are the most daring because they have the most, the, the, the higher level of anonymity. They can just like, get they feel like they can get away with whatever. And, um, <clears throat> but that doesn't take away uh, the hurt or the pain that you can cause somebody by your cruel your cruel words and you really do have an effect on people and i've seen it with like other youtubers too where it's like it's not it's not a game um it's rude and you will be held accountable after this life for who whether it's on the internet or in person or on the phone or whatever, you're going to be held accountable for the things that you say to people and how you treat people. And it really says a lot about you, who you are as a person inside when you don't care. You, you, you just like talk to somebody any old way, but especially like when there's like anger, condescension, it's just, it's really bad. It's really toxic. And that's why when I do have people that are, um, Maybe not even trolling, but if they're just being like toxic and condescending, rude, mean, then I block them. And I do it because uh, it affects me. It affects me. I, no one likes to take that kind of abuse, you know? And I can't say that I've been perfect. There's been times that I've been mad <clears throat> watching certain um, YouTube videos, and so I've said things that I probably shouldn't have. But some people get really, really out of line really out of line so anyway uh cyber bullying you know there may still be trolls <laughs> like kind of like trolls in the millennium but i think that uh there will be a lot less and they'll be they'll not be as bad as they are now so um okay prostitution that's one of the oldest professions, right? Isn't that what they say? Is that prostitution is is the is the oldest profession? Um, is that what they say that it's the oldest? I don't know, but anyway, that's that's going to be gone again. I'm I'm not very familiar with the world of prostitution, but I I imagine that there are occasionally unwanted pregnancies. Um, but obviously these things can ruin marriages. If you have somebody that's married, that's engaging in this, um, it, it can ruin marriages. Uh, it's not good for you, obviously, spiritually. Um, and then there's, you know, diseases, sexually transmitted diseases that can go around. Uh, there's so much bad 
there's so much bad that comes from it. And then if you're driving around and then you see one, you know, you don't want your family to see some lady on the street and then you know who it is and they know who she is or whatever. Now, I can't say that I... <laughs> can't say that I've ever seen one myself. I, I feel like there maybe was one time. Uh, I don't know if this is a false memory or not. Yeah, so I don't know if I've actually like seen one like the way that it's portrayed in movies where they're like on the street in like a shady part of town. But anyway, uh, that's I guarantee that's not going to be that's not going to be around anymore. Um, arson. Same thing. <laughs> Arson's really bad. I can't imagine any terrestrial person committing arson. I, I think that's purely, just like prostitution, I think that's purely a, um, a telestial thing. And then uh, finally, bribery. Right. And that's a lot, that's one of the things, uh, among many other things, among many other things, but that's one of the things that can corrupt politicians or people in positions of power um, or influence bribery so you know how great would it be to know that you don't have to worry about that with your uh, elected officials right in the millennium i don't know how government's going to work exactly we know that what we do know is christ will be the king of the world um but we also know that when, when we were studying the Council of 50, in the early days, Joseph Smith with the Council of 50, they were looking at drafting a constitution for the kingdom of God. And so it's not too hard for me to think that maybe there, there still would be elections like at the local lever, level for, I don't know, mayors or leaders of countries um, or states, or however, however things are defined within the millennium, there's probably still going to be some kind of election system. But think about how different politics will be, because if there are elections, uh, you're not going to have to worry about who you're voting for or who the other person is voting for. And if that person that gets, gets into office is doing something because they were bribed, right? Uh, they're doing things for corrupt reasons. So I don't think there's going to be any more corruption in politics. Uh, I, I tend to think that a lot of people that do get in, into politics, I'm not saying everybody, but I think that the majority of people that get into politics are the people that look for power. They look for control. They're uh, narcissistic. They're looking for attention, praise, validation, uh, they're trying to um, just rise to the top. Uh, you have psychopaths that uh, they're they're defined by having goals and then achieving those goals no matter uh, what the cost. They don't they don't they don't experience remorse. Um, they don't really have a conscience, and um, and it's common for them to seek for control and power and things like that. So. It'd be amazing if we could have politics operating the way that they're supposed to be operating without bribery, without blackmail, without, um, you know, wh whatever, just all the, the bad things that come along with politics and people trying to influence things through, through different methods, you know, and, and definitely secret combinations, right? I guess we should put that on here. Um, I'm going to call it secret combinations so that, you know, secret combinations, secret combinations ruin, they, they ruin everything. Um, we know that in the millennium that everything is going to be revealed. And one of the things I hope that is revealed is the extent of, um, the effects of, <clears throat> the secret combinations throughout the history of the world. Because I think that they do wield a lot of power and they have a lot of influence and who knows how history may have changed, probably in really drastic ways if there weren't secret combinations, you know, working the system. Um, 
using all the tools that they use to maintain, to gain, maintain power, wealth. So, okay, so that's going to be it. So just in the world of crime, okay, and law enforcement, I th whether what I said here was accurate or not, it's probably somewhat close. And I think that we can be pretty guaranteed that the world is going to be drastically, drastically different in the millennium compared to how it is now. Um, so that's just this is just one of the many, many things to look forward to uh, when it comes to the second coming. This is one reason why for us, if you're living righteously, you should be looking forward to you should be looking forward to that day. It's not going to be a dreadful day for the righteous. It will be for the wicked. It's going to be a great, great day for the righteous for so many reasons. And this this is some of it right here. I'm going to, you know, continue to expand on this list and explore other things in uh, other fields. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share this and I'll talk to you guys later.